everyone thanks so much for joining me today my name is Lydia and this is time with Lydia the pharmacist a warm welcome to you if you're new to this channel this is a channel where we educate ourselves on common health problems we provide advice and information on health and well-being so please don't hesitate to hit on that subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss any video that I upload and to all our returning subscribers, you are so amazing. I appreciate you all for coming in and out to watch my videos all the time. Thank you so much. Today, I've got a very interesting topic to share with you. And we are going to be spending some time together talking about pneumonia. We are going to be talking about some symptoms of pneumonia, the different types of pneumonia and also the medical treatment of pneumonia as well as home remedies that you can carry out when you get pneumonia so as to get some relief. Pneumonia is a type of chest infection and it affects the tiny sacs in your lungs. When you have pneumonia, these air sacs get inflamed and fill with fluid and this can make it harder to breathe. A variety of organisms, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, can cause pneumonia. And pneumonia can range in seriousness from mild to life-threatening pneumonia. It is more serious for infants and young children, as well as people older than 65 and people with health problems or weakened immune system. The signs and symptoms of pneumonia vary from mild to severe pneumonia depending on factors such as the type of germ causing the infection, your age, and your overall health. Mild symptoms often are similar to those of a cold or flu, but they last longer. And signs and symptoms include chest pain when you breathe or cough, confusion, or changes in your mental awareness, especially in adults age 65 and older. You can also develop a cough, which may produce phlegm, and there is fatigue, there is fever, sweating, and chills. Also, it can cause a decrease in your normal body temperature. You can also develop nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and shortness of breath. Newborns and infants may not show any signs of infection or they may vomit, have a fever and cough. They would appear restless or tired and without energy or they would have difficulty in breathing and eating. So when do you have to see your doctor when you develop these symptoms? You would have to see your doctor if you have difficulty in breathing, if you have a chest pain, when you have persistent high temperature or fever of 102 Fahrenheit or 39 degrees Celsius or higher. When the cough is persistent, especially if you're coughing up pus, and it's especially important that people in these high risk groups see a doctor. That is if you're an adult older than 65 years and children younger than the age of two with signs and symptoms also if you have an underlying condition or a weakened immune system and people receiving chemotherapy or taking medication that suppress the immune system also take note of the fact that for some older adults and people with heart failure or a chronic lung problem, pneumonia can quickly become a life-threatening condition. There are different types of pneumonia and many different germs can cause pneumonia. The most common are bacteria and viruses in the air that we breathe. Your body usually prevents these germs from infecting your lungs, but sometimes these germs can overpower your immune system, even if your health is generally good. Pneumonia is classified according to the types of germs that cause it and where you got the infection. So the first type of pneumonia 
is called community acquired pneumonia and is the most common type of pneumonia it occurs outside of hospitals or other healthcare facilities and it may be caused by bacteria and the most common type of bacteria is called streptococcus pneumonia this type of pneumonia can occur on its own or after you've had a cold or a flu also community acquired pneumonia can be caused by bacteria like organisms and an example is mycoplasma pneumonia and this typically produces milder symptoms than the other types of pneumonia also community acquired pneumonia can be caused by a fungi and this type of pneumonia occurs in people with chronic health problems or weakened immune system and in people who have inhaled large doses of the organisms the fungi that cause it can be found in soil or bed droppings and vary depending on the geographical location viruses including covid 19 can cause pneumonia covid 19 may cause pneumonia which can become really severe the second type of pneumonia is known as hospital acquired pneumonia you know some people catch pneumonia during a hospital stay for another illness hospital acquired pneumonia can be serious because the bacteria causing it may be more resistant to antibiotics and because the people who get it are already sick people who are on breathing machines such as ventilators often used in intensive care units are at higher risk of this type of pneumonia the third type of pneumonia i want to talk about is healthcare acquired pneumonia healthcare acquired pneumonia is a bacterial infection that occurs in people who live in long-term care facilities or who receive care in outpatient clinics including kidney dialysis centers and just like the hospital acquired pneumonia healthcare acquired pneumonia can be caused by bacteria that is more resistant to antibiotics the fourth type of pneumonia is known as aspiration pneumonia aspiration pneumonia occurs when you inhale food drink vomit or saliva into your lungs aspiration pneumonia is more likely if something disturbs your normal gag reflex such as a brain injury or swallowing problems or excessive use of alcohol or drugs now let's talk about those who are at risk or more likely to develop pneumonia pneumonia can affect anyone but the two age groups at highest risk are children who are two years old or younger and people who are age 65 or older other risk factors include being hospitalized chronic diseases like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or copd a heart disease and also smoking smoking damages your body's natural defenses against bacteria and viruses that cause pneumonia also if you have a weakened or suppressed immune system people who have hiv or have had an organ transplant or who are receiving chemotherapy or long-term steroids are at risk so how can you prevent pneumonia there are a few things that you can do to help prevent pneumonia the first one is get vaccinated vaccines are available to prevent some types of pneumonia talk to your doctor about getting these vaccines make sure children get vaccinated the second thing you need to do is practice good hygiene to protect yourself against respiratory infections that sometimes lead to pneumonia wash your hands regularly or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer also cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze and throw the tissue away immediately in the bin the third preventive measure is don't smoke smoking reduces your natural defenses against infections and damages your lungs keep your immune system strong 
exercise regularly and eat healthy diets also have enough sleep avoid misuse of alcohol as excessive alcohol misuse weakens your immune system making you more susceptible to infections including pneumonia now let's talk about the treatment of pneumonia treatment of pneumonia depends on factors like the severity the type of pneumonia your age and your overall health options include medicines as well as lifestyle and home remedies these would help you these would help you recover quickly and decrease your risk of developing complications antibiotics are prescribed by doctors once it is established that you have pneumonia through a blood test or a chest x-ray other tests are also carried out depending on the extent of the infection and the antibiotic that is prescribed depends on the type of bacteria that caused the infection if your symptoms do not improve after finishing a course of antibiotics then make sure you inform your doctor so they can prescribe another course or another antibiotic for you also a cough medicine may be used to calm the cough so that you can have enough rest high temperature reducers or pain relievers can be taken and you can take paracetamol or ibuprofen to help reduce your body temperature and provide you some comfort if you are in pain especially if you have chest pain but before you take these make sure you speak to your pharmacist or your doctor so they can advise you appropriately there are also some home remedies that you can carry out to prevent the pneumonia from becoming worse and the first one is get plenty of rest don't go back to school or work until after your temperature returns to normal and you stop coughing up mucus even when you start to feel better be careful not to overdo it because pneumonia can recur. It's better not to jump back into your routine until you are fully recovered. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if you're not sure. Also take your medication as prescribed. If you have been prescribed an antibiotic, make sure you finish the course. It is very important so you don't develop any resistance towards that particular antibiotic. Also to avoid making your condition worse, don't smoke or be around smoke or people who are smoking. I hope you have learned some new things today. Pneumonia is a very deadly disease and with COVID-19 around, a lot of people are developing pneumonia unknowingly. So once you develop these symptoms, make sure you report to a doctor immediately or as soon as you can. Please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please hit on that subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss any video that I upload. Also leave your comments in the comment section. Tell me if you have ever developed pneumonia, what you did, what medication you took and even if you know someone who have developed pneumonia before and how their experience was. I'll be very glad if you share this video with your family and friends. Let a lot of people hear this information and learn from it as well. You know, we are all learning and as we learn, we change some habits that we've developed over the years. We change some practices that we are so used to. And as we do that, we experience a better quality of life. Thank you once again for your time today and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.